As one of PlayStation's top 10 mascots, you cannot deny that Sly Cooper is a classic. Released in 2002, Sly Cooper has stolen the hearts of fans for many years. Going from its first game being a 3D beginning to end platformer, to evolving into a more open world stealth platformer. This is one of those series that really helped develop my love for stealth games. Still to this very day, Sly Cooper is one of my most favorite video game franchises to date. At least top five, that being with Ratchet and Clank, Kingdom Hearts, as well as Persona. But when it comes to childhood memories, Sly Cooper as well as Ratchet and Clank are probably the games that I played the most when I was a kid. My first experience with Sly was actually on one of those thin little demo disc things that you could get with your PS2 and you could only play like one or two levels of it. Both Sly Cooper and Ratchet and Clank I had those demo discs for. And one day I knew that I had to track the rest of this game down. It was so much fun to play. And once I got my hands on this first game, I knew there was no going back. We actually just streamed the entire series on the PS3 over on Operation Gamer Live. So if you want to go check those out, you totally can. There's a playlist and everything, but we go through every single game, one, two, three, as well as four. And now it's time to do what I've been dreading to do. Rank every single Sly Cooper game from worst to best. This was by far the hardest series I had to rank for a couple reasons. One, there are only four games, making it hard to nitpick about the smaller details. Two, in my opinion, there are no bad Sly Cooper games. Each game has its own charm and factor in making each game unique and fun to play through, therefore making the nitpicking harder to do. Last, it's one of my favorite series ever created, so criticizing each game for its flaws is going to be difficult for me personally. Also, I'm always at a constant struggle between two games on which one is better than the other, and this list may be subject to change. But I think I finally have a concrete idea of what my list would look like. Some quick ground rules before we get started. First things first, when looking at the first three games, I'm going to be looking at the PS2 releases because in my opinion, these are the better versions to play. Mostly because these PS3 ports make me think nasty and unwanted thoughts that I don't want to be thinking about for one of my favorite video game franchises. I'm still not over it. This entire part is ruined. This is fucking bullshit. But I'm going to be looking at these four games in their most original versions as possible. Also, I'm going to try to keep this ranking as spoiler free as possible. I'll be talking about some minor plot points as well as some gameplay spoilers. I will not be talking about Endgame as well as any big twists or anything like that. For anyone who is new to the series, I want to have them have the most fresh experience as possible if they want to try these games. Last but not least, please keep in mind that this is all just my opinion and it's not all set in stone. For God's sake, my word is not law. Everyone's allowed to have their own opinions, everyone's gonna have different lists, and I implore you to discuss in the comments below. I want to hear what you guys have to think about this series as well, and I want to know your lists as well. And also, just know that my opinions are subject to change if I see fit, but this is the most concrete list that I can come up with. Also, to give you guys a heads up, all gameplay footage in this ranking is going to be from the PS2 versions. I just got this really cool upscaler that upscales my footage quite tremendously and it's fantastic and I really wanted a video where I could use it and this was the best place that I could use it. So all gameplay footage will be coming from the PS2 for the original three games and the PS3 obviously from the fourth. So without further ado, let's get this list started. This, in my opinion, is my ranking of every single Sly Cooper game from worst to best. Putting this one at the bottom does feel like a huge cop out, trust me. But I had to judge this spot based on the game that I had the most problems with. And that unfortunately, is Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. But just because this is at the bottom of the list does not mean that I didn't enjoy it, nor do I not recommend it. In fact, after replaying this on livestream, there were actually a lot of things that I ended up liking that I used to have issues with the first time that I played through this game. For example, I wasn't a big fan of the Grizz at first. I didn't think his story towards the end made that much sense and found him a little annoying. 
But after playing all the Sly games, he's actually really unique compared to all the other Sly villains and has become a personal favorite of mine, on par with Dimitri with his style and attitude. But I do think there were a lot of improvements, such as the hacking minigames were more unique and more fun to play. The Ancestors were very fun to play in terms of new unlockable characters that you could play as any time this time around. And the costume system feels a lot more utilized. You have clue bottles and treasures that make her return. And even though you can't go do jobs with her, you can play as Carmelita freely. I feel like the boss fights were very well designed and I had fun with each and every one of them. Except for one that felt like an overglorified cutscene, but we won't talk about that. There were a lot of things in this game that I felt were a step in the right direction, but there were a few things that I did have issues with. The new pacing for the jobs, I it was just not my favorite. Sly 2 and 3 has Bentley show you a slideshow and a few different jobs become available, and you can go and do them in any order. This one, however, felt more of a linear experience where only one to two jobs were available and they felt like they needed to be done in a set order. All the pickpocket treasures were different, but they all had the same set values. While good for grinding money, it just felt a little lazy. And this complaint also carries over from the new Ratchet and Clank games as well, I'm not a big fan of the constant commentary. There will be many times where Bentley will say something and either he or Sly or whoever you're playing as will say the exact same fucking thing two seconds later. Break out the tail bird co- Watch those lasers, Sly! Sly, watch out for those whirlwinds! I should dodge these whirlwinds. I'm right the whirlwind. Whirlwind. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, I need to dodge this wrecking ball. Try jumping those small whirlwinds! to dodge this wrecking ball. No shit, really? I thought it would be fun to be crushed by a two-ton armadillo, but no! Everyone has to have the exact same opinion, and I'm not allowed to have my crushing dreams realized. Why can't I be happy? The game feels a little too forgiving as well, making a huge lot of the game extremely easy. I don't like using difficulty as a factor in a ranking, but... I obviously won't show it, comparing the finale of Sly 3 to Sly 4, you can understand what I'm talking about. Also, this game felt extremely short. I love the time travel aspect, but I feel like there could have been more done in terms of using the time travel. There are only six levels, but I feel like one or two more could have done the game a bit of justice. So as much as Sly 4 improves, it holds itself back in many other ways, but it's a great step in the right direction even though a lot more could have been improved upon the game. And that is why Sly Cooper Thieves in Time is sitting here at number 4. Also, you gotta tell me, who pulled it off better? Carmelita? <laughs> hey, you big apes! Ooh. Ooh. or our main man, Murray. to replay both these missions for the sake of this joke. If there is not a fight in the comments about this, I will be severely disappointed. The game that started it all. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. I remember having to track this game down when I was extremely young, and me and my grandmother actually found it at a GameStop. That had nothing to do with the ranking, I just thought it was an interesting fact. Obviously, this game hit hard with nostalgia, but it's not enough to put it any higher. Being the first of its series, it's more of a traditional platformer. No health bars, barely any stealth, and a level-by-level -level design with an interactive hub world. This was basically a carbon copy of Crash Bandicoot, but with an explorable hub world and a sneakier vibe. I prefer this art style of the game as well, in comparison to Thieves in Time. 
The cartoon aesthetic across the original three games is extremely unique and I love it. The soundtrack, at least in the original, is fantastic as well. Some of my favorite tracks being in the first, second, and fourth worlds. The gameplay is so much fun, even before Sly Cooper got its solid identity as a stealth platformer. You have cool climbing tricks you can learn along the way, power-ups to collect after collecting all the clue bottles, and you get to drop cars on top of people. Okay, only in this one part, but it's still funny. Enemies do only die in one hit, so there's really no use in being sneaky, except for a few sections in the game. Bentley will usually tell you when it's best to be sneaky so you don't get dogpiled on. <laughs> get, get it? D -d dogpiled? <laughs> Why do you guys watch my videos? But it also has some unique gameplay segments, such as escort missions, races, and the drivable turret. I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of these sections. Some of them are fun, don't get me wrong, but I definitely have some bad memories about one or two of these minigame sections. I've never had gumbo in my life, nor will I ever have gumbo now thanks to this game. Also, driving is the worst. Too many times has this happened to me, and I'm one of those people who just quits if they don't have a perfect run. But why is this above Thieves in Time if this is before Sly Cooper got its solid identity? Well, it's more than just nostalgia. Younger Me found this game to be a blast and had some trouble with this game. Only reason it's so easy now is because I've played it hundreds of times. Compared to the other two original PS2 games, I feel like the bosses are very well designed, as long as the remaster doesn't ruin them. Like I said, I haven't forgotten. For the most part, I also feel like the minigames don't overstay their welcome, and it's a good balance of platforming and minigames, in most places anyways. Sure, you don't play as the other members, but it's a good buildup for them when they eventually gain their confidence in the field. Also, I won't show it, but the finality of this game, in my opinion, is way better than Thieves in Time. Sly Cooper 1 is something you can blast through in an entire day and not regret playing it. It's a great representee of something old, something new, and Sly Cooper 1 lays the groundwork of an amazing series that just continues to get better and better. And that is why Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus is sitting here in the number 3 slot. Before we get to this number 2 slot, I just want to give this perspective to you guys. During my live streams of all these games, I constantly kept saying that how Sly 2 and Sly 3 just kept swapping for me back and forth, and I had no idea how I was going to make a ranking for a video. I did indeed have a favorite before replaying all the games, but I wanted to play through them mostly so I could just confirm my suspicions. It's really hard to put one over the other because each game have things that I like and have things that I disliked, and they constantly just keep fighting at each other, and it's so hard to pick a number one. I do think that factually there is a best Sly Cooper game between these two, but I didn't just want to look at the facts. Along with looking at the facts, I wanted to look on my perspective of which one do I enjoy playing more. If I were to get up one morning and say, hey, I want to play a Sly Cooper game, which one would be the first one that I grab? And it was these very questions that confirmed my number one spot. While these two games definitely constantly revolve, I think I finally found my definitive answer. So, here we go. No doubt in my mind that Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves is definitely the better of the two games. It improves upon the graphics, the gameplay, the cast, the soundtrack, and it even has 3D? They even add challenge modes to almost all the jobs that you play just for a little bit of extra fun after you're done beating the game. And while all that is great, I think it adds just a little too much and just doesn't do enough with it. 
For starters, Sly 3 adds a plethora of new characters to play as, including Inspector Fox. But there are some characters that I didn't feel like got as much playtime as I would have liked. Right here is going to be a spoiler warning for any characters that you play as, so you can skip to this point in the video if you don't want to be spoiled for the characters that you can play. But if you're okay with that, let's just go down the line. The main three, just as much as usual. The Guru is very fun to play as, and you get to play as him more often than any of the other extra characters that you can play as. Penelope, sure. Okay, you get to play as her RC contraptions, but I will stand on this hill where Bentleys are million times better. Penelope, I need you to learn what bombs are, because they are ten times better than your fucking hook on a rope. Panda King, you only play as him twice and you don't even get to play as him in the finale, which I think is dumb. Dimitri only had two moments as well, but I didn't enjoy his gameplay as much anyway, so I'll give Dimitri a pass. Carmelita, though, only had a few moments to shine, which was kind of a letdown because she, hands down, has some of the best gameplay to date, and he has an even greater moment in the end chapter that I won't spoil. As much as it was great having these other characters to play as, you couldn't select them from the safe house and didn't get much time to play as them. Another example of stuff being added and not being used enough is the hazard room. This is where you get your tutorials on how to use different characters, but only for the main three. And after the second episode, you don't touch it at all, which is really disappointed and could have been utilized more. Now, at this point, people are probably yelling at me to just skip the hazard room if you already know how to play the game. But honestly, it's a part of the game for a reason, so my completionist brain will not let me skip the hazard room. Yes, that is my fault, but shut up. My other gripe with Sly 3 was that there were just some jobs that I straight up did not enjoy, neither as a kid nor an adult. While there were only a select few, it did feel like I was going, wow, I love this part, and then a few minutes later saying, oh god, I hate this part, and then continue to go back and forth and back and forth. Sly 3 offers a lot of alternative gameplay sections as well, where there were a lot of them that I loved, some being the dogfight and the pirate ship sections, and others that I wasn't a big fan of, like the hangar and the china gunner section. But this is only me nitpicking a couple jobs. The only other thing that keeps me from putting Sly 3 at number one is that most of these missions don't feel like we're actually infiltrating a compound. Our main objective is to recruit the character that the level is based off of while beating the ruler of the area if they get in our way. But I will say, all of these bad guys are memorable, and I mean all of them. I guess you can make a case about the mask, but even it was a pain in our ass until the very end. But Sly 3 offers the most wicked of bad guys, especially General Sao. But she doesn't want to marry you. She's a woman. She doesn't know up from down. Once I convinced her father to take up meditation, she was ripe for the picking. I faced a lot of bad men in my time, but you, sir, are the worst. Can I just say beating the shit out of this chicken was so much fun? And I even ended up figuring out how to cheese his entire fight. And honestly, I feel no shame. It is so much fun. Combat has been improved as well with the new jump, spin, and push attacks that make these boss fights so much more fun to take on. Treasures sell automatically when you steal them, and you can drop boats on people's heads anywhere now. The last thing I'll say about Sly 3 is that there's no clue bottles, which I miss these things, man. It gave me a reason to explore these stages inside and out, and they were just a blast to try and find. So having them not here just makes the worlds feel empty, honestly. The only reason I have spoken so negatively about Sly 3 in this portion of the video is because I literally had to nitpick the game in order for me to justify putting it in second place. Trust me, I nitpicked both of these entries from the inside out, and unfortunately Sly 3 had the most nitpicks out of both of these games. I love almost everything about Sly 3, and it is 100% an easy recommendation for me. It improves a lot in the gameplay section as well as the story, while kind of holding itself back a little. Once again, cannot recommend this game enough, and unfortunately, it has to sit in my number two slot due to some very, very painful nitpicking. But at this point, I'm sure you just want to hear my justification for my number one slot. So here we go.
So, before replaying all the Sly Cooper games, Sly 2 Band of Thieves stood as my favorite Sly Cooper game. Hell, maybe even my favorite PS2 game. And today, I am announcing that this opinion has not changed. Being the first Sly Cooper game to finally solidify its identity, Sly 2 Band of Thieves is such a blast to play. In my personal opinion, the environments in this game were the best to play through. Even though they were much smaller than, than the next two games to come, the darker tone from the PS2 version really set the scene of us trying to infiltrate a compound and steal back the clockwork parts. While not being as memorable, the Sly 2 villains were interesting in their own way, especially Dimitri, who was arguably my favorite character in the entire series. Are you hearing what I mean to you? Do you think you have juice? Don't show me a little mind when talking about such big things. You think you can swing the bat? Show your bling and let me shine you. I have no idea what you're saying. And your suit sucks. Oh, let's dance! Hence this beautiful artwork done by a viewer of mine, Vanessa. Thank you so much, this looks freaking amazing. She does incredible drawings. Link to her channel in the description, please go check it out. Now, these villains don't get much screen time, but when they do, they can be menacing and funny in their own ways. There are indeed a couple villains who I feel like had wasted potential, but their spot does get taken by other menacing characters. I like the game's structure a little more than Sly 3. When then we're just trying to do what we can to recruit the new gang member, here we're actually doing jobs around the compound to infiltrate and steal what we're trying to steal, like proper thieves. The finale honestly isn't as fantastic as Sly 3, but it has many more great moments in between. Do you see what I mean when I say these two games flip-flop? It's ridiculous. And once again I'll mention, they have the clue bottles again, thank god. I really did miss them in Sly 3, honestly. I know some people aren't big about them, but I really do feel like it gives the level more depth as you search every nook and cranny to look for them, cause these fuckers are well hidden. I know these levels like the back of my hand now and it makes future playthroughs much more fun to traverse and take on different jobs in different ways. You also have the treasures that you can run back to your hideout to help with buying power-ups. Some are timed, and some are not, and I still think it's a great addition. There are a few more inconveniences, like having to sell treasure manually, and Murray and Bentley not being able to pickpocket, but regardless in that case, if you're gonna explore any world in any Sly game, chances are you're going to pick Sly anyways, so I really don't see the problem here. You do only get to play as the main three, but honestly, I didn't mind this. There isn't a whole lot of other mechanics I had to learn throughout the game, and there's just enough new sprinkled in here and there to keep the gameplay interesting. As well as Sly 3, there are also other alternative gameplay segments, but this time I don't think that they overstay their welcome. I can't think of any job in Sly 2 that I don't look forward to playing. Even now while I'm writing this script, I can't think of any. There were some jobs that I was not looking forward to while replaying the whole trilogy, but I ended up enjoying at the end. Obviously, it may seem like I didn't nitpick this game as hard as I did Sly 3 and Sly 4, but that's just because there are not a whole lot of nitpicks that I have with this game. There are a lot of things that I definitely think were improved upon, like the treasure selling automatically, as well as Bentley being in his wheelchair, but I honestly get a lot more enjoyment out of playing Sly 2, and that's really what determined this number one slot. I could go on and on, but I think I've made my point pretty clear. In my opinion, Sly 2 is my perfect Sly game. It isn't perfect by any means, but if you were to ask me what the next Sly game should be based off of, I honestly would pick Sly 2. I love the characters, I love the gameplay, I think it just has a much better structure in terms of jobs and... There's just not a whole lot of alternative gameplay that overstays their welcome. I just, I don't think it's a perfect game, but this, in my personal opinion, is my perfect Sly game. And that is why Sly 2 Band of Thieves is in my number one slot. This by far is the hardest ranking I've ever had to make. I know it's only my second ranking video, but just me telling you how hard of a list this was to make should tell you 
how good of a series this is, and it's definitely worth checking out. While my opinions do sway due to certain details, because opinions can change, they're not law, I can confidently say that this is the best list that I can come up with. Sly Cooper will forever be a series that I will always hold dear and will always be an amazing memory from my childhood. My love for this damn raccoon will never cease. Just don't tell my girlfriend that because she questions me enough as it is. If you have never played this series before, I implore you to do so. Just do yourself the favor and play the PS2 versions. If for some reason you're not able to play the PS2 versions, the remasters are fine. Just do yourself a favor and turn off the music for the Ms. Ruby boss fight. You will thank me later. But with that being said, it's time to end off another ranking video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do what you guys doing that YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Operation Number One. All that cool stuff. Are you a Sly Cooper fan? Did you stumble on this video by accident? Did you enjoy it? Please let me know in the comments below, as well as your lists and your rankings. I really, really want to hear your guys' opinions. Before I sign off though, I got a couple questions for you. For my next ranking video, I'm planning on either doing Ratchet & Clank or Kingdom Hearts. We are currently streaming through the entire Ratchet & Clank series on Operation Gamer Live, so the ranking video is definitely going to be coming after, but I do also plan on replaying through all the Kingdom Hearts games before I officially make my ranking on that. So which one do you want to see first, Ratchet & Clank or Kingdom Hearts? Either way, it's going to be a minute before my next ranking video because A, I have to replay through all the games again before I can actually get a proper ranking out. And also, these rankings take a long damn time to make and it's a little... That's all I can say about that. But I think either one of these topics is going to be very fun to rank. Now that I think about it, Maybe not Kingdom Hearts because our, a lot of people already have so many opinions about where I put certain games in my Final Fantasy ranking. Oh, just wait till they know where I put Kingdom Hearts 3! But be sure to let me know in the comments below which games you want me to rank next. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the other content on my channel, and I will see you guys next time.